Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky Police Department uses the power of technology to prepare, prepare themselves for possible situations while on the job. And addiction recovery specialists talked with a group of children in our region about the dangers that come with experimenting with certain drugs. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Alrighty, 533 here on your Friday morning, and it is almost, well, it is almost the weekend. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning. Brandon, I thought you were doing something over there. I don't know. I thought you, like, threw your hands up or something. I was, I was scratching my butt. Oh, I thought, I thought did I say something <laughs> wrong no, already? I, you called me up because I had, I had my jacket. Oh, on. I okay. I was like, what is that? Butt. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. I thought, man, something's already upsetting. Go, that's all it was. <laughs> we don't itch around here. That's exactly We do right. have an itch, for, an itch for the weather, though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to be all that people think it is, especially in the valleys, but it is going to be cold. Temperatures are already dropping. Our uh, warmth of the day was at midnight. The high for the day was at midnight. It's a slow drop, but again, some snowflakes will fly today. They're already trying to fly over into parts of uh, far eastern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky, and southwest Virginia. So again, this is the areas above 2,000 feet. I keep stressing that above 2,000 feet, we expect to get the most accumulation, most of us an inch, if you're lucky, down in the valleys. All right, going over to Lake Cumberland on Pulaski County there, that sign, not too much going on over that way this morning. Very calm start to this Friday, but cool. 36 in Somerset, London, Williamsburg, Irvine, popular number out there, Moorhead, Jackson, Hazard, Pikeville. A lot of sensors back online this morning. Good to see Middlesboro and Logan rejoining us this morning. And you see those spots, anything above, or excuse me, below 35 is in the area that could transition pretty quickly. That is Logan, Clintwood, and Wise. Now the moisture is down toward Clintwood and Wise, but for the most part, the temperatures are not there just yet. Across the state and region, you see those temperatures continue to drop. 38 Cincinnati, 40s in the Tri-Cities in Knoxville, but 32 back toward Carbondale, Illinois, behind that cold front. Day planner for today, some wintry mix possible. This is not going to be an all-day thing. Now, even though it's got snow and whatever on there, you'll probably see some flakes fly. Temperatures will slowly drop. But again, remember, the accumulation, the highest accumulations will be on the ridge tops with this one, but you'll see snowflakes flying across most of the region today. Dakota? All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, the Prestonsburg Police Department is working through an annual training, taking safety into the simulation. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about a program first responders hope will prepare them for whatever comes. It's whatever you want me to use. A program all about being prepared. They must be vigilant because there's many different scenarios all the way from non-lethal to lethal force and then verbal compliance hoping to provide the experience officers need to always make it home. It makes a more effective way to approach when you go to different calls. Prestonsburg police officers are working through the Kentucky League of Cities firearm simulator safety training, entering scenarios they may never encounter but should be familiar with. Uh, you may respond to a call to where you have to talk to a person with a mental disability. This specific training simulator puts you through that so you know how to talk to them, you know, be verbal with them, and essentially get them to comply. And while some incidents are impossible to predict, which the officers learned firsthand during the Allen ambush in June. And there's a specific training on here that officers respond to an active shooter. He's coming! Officers, okay! So their awareness, attention to detail, and pay attention to the surroundings. So as they're going through this training scenario, there's different people running at them. Uh, there's shots being fired off. So it puts them in a real life scenario as if they would respond to that on the street like we did in the June 30th incident. Officers say it is giving them a real glimpse of the obstacles and opportunities that come with wearing the badge. It's about as real as it gets as what you're gonna face on the street. And the feedback we get is they really enjoy the training with all the different scenarios that they go through. From the screen to the streets. In Prestonsburg, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Prestonsburg PD says the training, including the real weapons, which use CO2 bullets for sound and weight consistency, are as real as possible, making officers forget they are in a simulated space at the Mountain Arts Center. Well, addiction recovery specialists are hoping to keep children from ever going down the dangerous path drugs have taken so many on. Several groups at the Harlan Drug Summit yesterday expressed concerns about fentanyl and how deadly it can be. 
One way they've been fighting the drug problem is through Camp Unite, set up by Operation Unite. President Nancy Hell says uniting the kids has brought long-term success stories. Uh, they're married, they have families, they, they are employees, and they are active in their community coalitions because they want to continue. They now want their children to have the same prevention foundation that they were given through Operation Unite. There are also other ways addiction recovery specialists are combating the, the increase of fentanyl. The Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy will be starting a statewide campaign this year. Emergency crews in Laurel County had a busy Thursday night. In a Facebook post, the London Laurel Rescue Squad shared this image from a serious crash involving five cars. The crash happened around 6.30 p.m. on I-75 near the, near the mile marker 40. Well, we are told first responders had to cut open at least two of the vehicles to get people out. No word on the condition of the people involved in that crash. Over in Floyd County, attorney Ned Pillersdorf held a meeting with former clients of Eric C. Kahn yesterday to discuss recent developments in what he calls the Kahn fiasco. Many of Kahn's former clients were happy to hear about a settlement from the Social Security Administration that would help the so-called Forgotten 500 get their benefits reinstated. Pillersdorf says while the agreement is not 100% what he or his clients wanted, it's a step in a right direction. We didn't get everything we wanted, uh, but we got 9 out of 10. These people have been without benefits for six and a half, half years. If they simply request a hearing, they get their monthly benefits reinstated. And if they win the hearing, we're talking about them getting about $100,000 at least in back pay, six years. Congressman Hal Rogers released a statement regarding this settlement. You can read that over on WYMT.com. The Appalachian Regional Innovative uh, uh, is offering a major grant to improve internet access to people who need it. The $6.3 million in grant money is meant to boost broadband access in dozens of communities. It's designed to provide support, of, uh, support up to 50 underserved communities in 12 Appalachian states. The focus of the project will be to help communities compete for billions of dollars in federal broadband funding that will be available later this year. The East Kentucky Dream Center is growing into a new building in downtown Pikeville. Our Jordan Mullins has more about the new location and tells us how it will better serve the community. When it was first founded, the East Kentucky Dream Center only served about 50 meals each day. Now, nearing its five-year anniversary, it continues to grow from its humble beginnings. Now, like I said, we're reaching upwards of 400 plus every Wednesday and Friday at our Pikeville location. So we quickly outgrew that kitchen, and we realized then we have to find a larger space. On Wednesday, the Dream Center held its first community meal at its new location on Hambly Boulevard. We were able to obtain a larger space uh, just down from Velocity Market on the other end of town on Hambly Boulevard, and it's, it's great. It's phenomenal. And the new space means more opportunities to help the community, like a baby room, the ability to host larger meals, and more. This space will absolutely help us to better serve the community. We're offering NA classes on Sundays, AA classes on Tuesdays, and you know, we have to have space for those people. We want it to feel like a, a, a good environment for them. And more opportunities for folks to get involved. Even if you have a Wednesday or Friday off, even if you have a Tuesday or Thursday off, come in and help us meal plan and meal prep. Um, come in and help sort diapers and sort, you know, baby clothing and that kind of thing. Faithfully serving, while swiftly growing. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Dawson also says the Dream Center's second meal in its new location will be hosted today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you'd like to volunteer, meal prep starts at 8 o'clock this morning, but volunteers are needed all day. Well, just ahead this morning, the story of a beloved show from the early 2000s is set to be continued on the big screen, bringing back an iconic cast of characters. And temperatures will continue to drop today and rain will change over to snow across the region. I'll tell you what we can expect in about three minutes.